Good morning, world. How is it going on a Monday morning? Hope everyone is doing well. Good morning to Piper John, Will Honda Hangouts, L, the 24 picker. Thank you for being the first three, the three amigos in the chat. All right. All right. Look at that. Two up votes, one down vote. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I want to tell everyone that the thumbs down people, I love you guys interaction it's great keep on doing it but anyway danny emm monty in texas good morning emm in charleston south carolina good morning gina good morning will honda hangouts in ohio uh yeah how's everyone going this morning oshan good morning good morning all right i hope everyone had a great weekend we did our you know, our thrifting yesterday, our picking, and that kind of goes into the topic I'm going to get into this morning here in a minute when the uh, numbers come up just a little bit. But yeah, Mary, Fran, good morning, Fran, Mary McQueen, good morning, Michelle in Richmond, Virginia, good morning. Yeah, as you come in, just hit that thumbs up if you will. We do appreciate it greatly. Lauren, Minnesota, good morning, Lauren. Thank you for popping in, Brian Manuel. Good morning, bud. So, yeah, how's everyone going? <laughs> how's everyone doing? <laughs> uh, Keith, good morning, bud. How you doing? Keith, the command post picker, thank you for coming in and joining us this morning. I know in, in Northern Virginia, I know everyone talks about weather, but it is, it's clear and sunny, but man, is it windy. It's gusting like 40, 50 miles an hour winds out there, and today is... There's two trash days in my neighborhood, Mondays and Thursdays. I usually just do Thursdays, but a lot of people do stuff on Monday as well. And people put their trash out on days like today. I'm like, why? Because there are cans, there's trash all up and down my road because the winds are gusting 50 miles an hour. I wouldn't even put my trash out there. Um, yeah, but anyway, I had some stuff I wanted to take out because I cleaned it out the refrigerator. So I was going to put my trash out there today, but uh, it's too, too windy. So Maybe if I hear the trash man, I may pop it out there and, you know, and be like, here you go. And just take it right back in the garage. But, uh, yeah, so windy in Northern Virginia this morning, Nathan, Tommy Bernard. Good morning, bud. Good morning. Good morning. Tommy in Delaware, Nathan. Good morning. South of Martindale. Ooh, yeah. O'Shan uh, is, is another Wisconsin, Wisconsinite, Wisconsin, <laughs> Maria Nunez. Good morning. <laughs> Tommy, you know, uh, Tommy Bernard's in, uh, Delaware, like I said, Delaware is not too far from Northern Virginia. Actually people, you know, when I lived in the Midwest and I grew up in the Midwest, I didn't realize how close the States are out here in the East. And yeah, we're <laughs> just literally like an hour, hour and a half from Delaware and, uh, yeah, super, super windy. Good morning, Philly. You have windy in Philly as well. Hawk. Good morning. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, and when I was and people talk about this all the time. When I was young, I didn't mind winter, you know, like snow. And I still like snow to an extent, but as you get older, I'm just, just ready for warmth and comfort all the time. I can handle the heat. You know, <laughs> I mean, I get sunburned easily, but, uh, yeah, you take the proper precautions and, uh, wear your sunscreen. And, uh, I love those lightweight long sleeve SPF shirts. I wear those too. When we went to St. Louis, I wore those every day, even on the beach, you know, long sleeve, like white, SPF shirt. I was bright as rain. It's perfect. You know, um, we have the, uh, Oh, good. Thanks Monty. Uh, Monty in Texas. Uh, we have our, I've talked about it a lot. We have our, uh, West coast trip in, um, uh, June coming up and we thought about just doing stuff around LA and we, we've been around LA a lot. We've done stuff out there and I definitely got stuff in San Diego to do my, with my Marine Corps reunion in June. But, uh, when I was, I was preparing for the trip, figuring out what to do. I was like, you know what? We haven't been to Hawaii. So I just booked a flight to Hawaii <laughs> since we we're going to be in California already anyway. So we're in June, we're going to be in Hawaii for, uh, seven, eight days or so. So. But uh, when I'm there, I want to do some videos. Uh, they have a thing. They have a flea market at Aloha Stadium in uh, Honolulu on Oahu, and we'll be on Oahu. We're going to two islands. We're going to the Big Island, 
which is where the volcano stuff is. That's why I wanted to go there, the big island uh, where Kilauea is and all that stuff. And we're going, we're flying into Honolulu, Oahu. So we're hitting two of the islands. But anyway, I got to find me some more SPF long sleeve shirts because the other two I have are way too big for me now. Oh, I'm sorry, Monty. That's a big stinker. Piper John, come on down to Florida. Yeah, I, I trust me. When I, I, you know, I was, I lived in Florida for, oh, eight months or so before I met my wife. And, uh, yeah, if my wife had a job opportunity down there, it'd be really tempting to uh, head down there just for the warm weather, you know, just sick of the cold. But anyway, so, uh, we got 26 watching, not too bad. We'll jump into the, the topic of the day. Yesterday, we did our normal thrift day, and uh, we all have our comfort zones. We all get in our comfort zones, our routines. You know, you, you do have to be able to roll with the punches somewhat during the week, but, you know, we get in our routines. We have our habits and everything, and I'm the same way with how we uh, thrift on every Sunday. I've talked about it before, but we have a thrift store that's really close to us, like right across the road it's like less than it's like half a mile away and usually that's the one we'll hit first and then we'll hit two others we'll go up north a little bit and then backtrack but um yesterday i was like you know what let's change it up a little bit let's uh go to the thrift store up north first and we'll come back down and uh hit the others and uh Finding stuff is still a crapshoot. And no, it doesn't matter when you go to the thrift store. Find, finding this stuff is a crapshoot. Other people are going to buy it. Other resellers, just normal people, they're going to buy the stuff. So it's it's part luck finding stuff. You know, it's knowledge, but it's also the item going to be, is it going to be there? You know, that's that's luck. So uh, when we changed it up, it actually worked out really well. And not really for the reasons you would think. It worked out really well because of the uh, crowds because the way we changed it up yesterday it ended up saving us about an hour at the end of the day for not having to fight the crowds and wait in lines because the the thrift store closest to me it when it opens which is usually when we went there it is super crowded just right you know at the beginning people just flock flood in there and it's hard to get around you're fighting the crowds you're fighting the people and uh when i switched around and we went to the thrift store up north a little bit you know, they were already open and, um, yeah, it just worked out better. There was less crowds, there were shorter lines and, uh, everything worked out well. And the haul was still really good. you know, this week's haul video will be a, a do a, a doozy, a double haul because of the, I missed the haul from last week. So my, I've got a lot of stuff for a haul video that I need to film today. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it really worked out well, you know, getting out of the routine and changing stuff up. So yeah. It just goes to show you just need to think outside of the box sometimes and change stuff around. Oh, that's a good tip, Tommy. We do have a Ross, and I, I rarely hit it, actually, but uh, it's over by uh, Potomac Mills Mall. I may have to hit that. And we do have a, a Gabe's just recently opened up just down the road on Highway 1 here in, in Woodbridge. So I may have to stop by there because I need some of those SPFs. I need, you know, three or four of them good morning craig land shark picker in alabama thank you for popping in thank you for the shout out in your video craig i do appreciate that dan dan the new hampshire guy thank you for coming in jen good morning how, how are you guys doing this morning so yeah it's uh yeah changing up the routine worked out really well candace hicks good morning thank you for coming in and uh, that made me, you know, think, you know, changing up the thrifting routine, the sourcing routine and wonder what else I should change up in my routine, like just daily routine. So, uh, yeah, it's just food for thought. You know, you try, I tried something different yesterday and it worked out really well. It actually, like I said, saved me about, it saved us about an hour, hour and a half during, in the day, you know, when it came down to the end. So, yeah. Good morning, Rocky. Rocky Brook, thank you for coming in. David Phelps, good morning. And Gregory, lots of new names. I appreciate you guys joining in the chat. Keith, the command post picker, says, I can't wait for yard sale season to open up. It's really hard to find stuff at the thrift stores around here. Absolutely. 
Yeah, it's shit. And it's funny. I was just right before I came down here, I was watching Andy, the parrot head pickers recent, uh, what sold video. He's, he put out a what sold on Poshmark video yesterday and I watched it this morning and he talked about that. The regional differences, not only with thrift stores and garage sales, but in his area in Illinois, he finds a lot of good Harley Davidson stuff, not just t-shirts. He does find t-shirts, but he finds a lot of really good button up shirts. He sells for 50, 60 bucks a piece. I never find those in my area ever you know i find a lot of other good stuff but it just shows the regional differences the state to state the area to area even locality to locality difference you know thrift stores flea markets of state sales auctions what's good for you yeah you just gotta figure that out and yep and i know a lot of the louisiana people and i'm sure craig is looking forward to garage sale season as well of the the southern the southern states, the garage sale season open up opens up earlier than the northern states. So, Renee, Kathleen Newberry, good morning in Memphis, Tennessee. Anissa in Pennsylvania, good morning. Dawn, two hip chicks, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Mo, I forgot about that. Yeah, uh, Mo flips is Rocky Brook. I knew, I knew that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mo. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I knew that. Yeah, he does. Renee, uh, Renee says, uh, Kathleen Newberry, Renee says, Andy gets some good prices on Poshmark and he does. He does. He, um, absolutely does. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. Hit that thumbs up button. If you will, we do appreciate it. Still trying to grow the channel. We, uh, just popped over 1500 subscribers last week. Uh, we're adding, I don't know, about 100 to 125 new subscribers per month, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, and it's all because of you guys. It is 100% all, all because of you guys. Yeah, it's whatever tickles your fancy, Anissa. Tickle it. Yeah, just... <laughs> Candice says she finds tons of North Face and Chacos in her area. That's awesome. Like North Face in my area is very difficult to find, or if you do find it, it's really expensive because it's the North Face is super, super, super popular with the uh, Hispanic population in my area. So it drives up the prices and you can rarely find it. But I find, I mean, I'm not going to say all the time, but I find like Patagonia and Marmot pretty regularly and that stuff sells really well for me. So, yep. I think so too, Tommy. Tommy says Andy's Andy the pair had pickers pictures get him an extra ten dollars on everything. One hundred percent, I think so. And my pictures because of Andy have gotten way better. You know this new lighting setup, the backdrop. My pictures still aren't the level of Andy's, and I don't think they ever will be because I'm not willing to <laughs> take the time to put them in editing software and edit them. But uh, with the new lighting setup and the backdrop, taking pictures straight with the iPhone my pictures are light years better than they were from when I first started. So it's all about lighting and setting and backdrop. Yeah. And pictures bring, bring more money. They absolutely do. Yep. Yep. Okay. So talked about getting out of your routine, which I did yesterday and it worked out really well. Um, yeah, and, and that has me racking my brain what else I could change up. And, uh, you know, when we, in January, we talked about efficiency. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not even really going to talk about sales safe. Sales have been crap. There's no reason to hammer it anymore. They, and they've still been crap. And it's just February. It is what it is. So I'm not even going to hammer on it. I actually did make a sale on Amazon, Merchant Fulfilled, which is the first time in a long time, which is great. I've been, I've started putting, you know, cross posting stuff, putting some more stuff on Amazon. So, uh, yeah, because I have to. <laughs> Denise in Minnesota. Good morning, Denise. Thank you for coming in. Oh, me too, Craig. Craig says, I think I've taken the good enough approach to my pictures. And that's me too. I've got that new, those LED panels and everything. You can't even see it because I have my bins in the, in the way. But uh, yeah, those LED panels in the backdrop have made a good enough difference to me. Absolutely. Yeah, Dan says wicked slow, 100%. Yep. Oh, that's awesome, Maria. Maria flipped a Johnny 
was dressed, uh, founded at a dollar for over a hundred bucks. That's awesome. Uh, I don't do a lot of women's clothes, but my wife will find stuff every once in a while that I'll, you know, put up. It's because I just, there's so many, I watch Lauren's videos sometimes. And if Lauren's still in here, I watch her videos and some of the name brands. I'm like, I mean, how would I know, you know, cause I don't wear women's clothes, but I'm like, holy crap, holy crap. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Tommy. Yeah, they, uh, you know, I haven't checked out the uh, Ross's in my area, but you know, I've checked out TJ Maxx, Marshall's, Burlington Coat Factory. It's all over there by Potomac Mills, which is a huge mall in my area. And it's really hard to find stuff in my area with those times of things because there's so many population. And, 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 uh, I rarely even see stuff that gets to yellow sticker, it'll go red but it'll never get to yellow, which is the final clearance for like, uh, TJ Maxx and Marshalls and stuff. So, well, that's pretty good. Mo with how slow it is. Uh, he sold six this weekend. That's pretty good. <laughs> John Dad's Venture Garage says second Amazon sale, uh, camo toilet seat. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> that is awesome. Part-time pickers. Good morning. Steampunk town. Thank you for popping in. That's all right. Steampunk town. Everybody's busy. Everybody's doing, trying to get these sales up. Everybody's working out hard, you know, and it's just been, it's just February. Hopefully March is a lot. It, honestly, March can't be anything but better. And <laughs> that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, and that's the really, really tough part about this job. And it is a job is that it's easy to keep motivation when you're having fantastic sales. The hard part is to keep motivation when you're not selling anything. So, uh, yeah. And you guys help with that. You know, we all help each other with that. You're like, it'll happen. You just got to keep at it, keep listing, keep doing what you do. And it will happen. It 100% will happen. Yeah, Maria, they, yeah. too many varieties, too many details. And, uh, and women are picky. And that's just the way it is, you know? So, uh, L sold one shirt, one shirt on eBay, sold a few Amazon, including book. Oh, that's awesome. 50 cents to 55 bucks on a book. That is awesome. I have been contemplating for probably two or three weeks now. I bought one of the, uh, cheap book scanners. It's, you know, it's a scanner in general, but it's generally used for books on, uh, at the rec on the recommendation of Scott, the bearded picker. And, uh, but I have not bumped up to the professional Amazon account yet. And you need the professional Amazon account to get, you know, the Scoutify or Scout IQ so you can scan quicker and faster on books. And I've been kicking that can down the road for the past few weeks. So one of these days, I'm just going to have to jump in with both feet and go for it. You know, Tommy had a crazy busy weekend. I went back, patted the price into free shipping and went from 10 sales to 28. So you transitioned, so you, you raised your prices and did free shipping. Yeah. 100% Keith, keep listing. Twenty going out for part-time pickers. That is really, really good, man. That's really, really good. Yeah. No, and keep is not free anymore. Yeah. Hey, reseller Rockefeller. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's awesome. Part-time pickers, 600 bucks plus. That's awesome. So yeah, it goes to show that, I mean, these slow sales aren't affecting everyone just because I'm slow doesn't mean someone else is, you know, I've had some people that had some really good days, really, really good days. Yeah. I guess, you know, I guess I got kind of spoiled and I was having really good, you know, I was averaging about 250, but you know, I'd have the you know, every three or four days I'd have 400 and then, you know, 150 and then 250 and then 500, and, you know, but these past, this past two weeks has been like 60 bucks, 120, 80, nothing, you know, <laughs> it's been pretty low, but, uh, it'll come back. It always does. It's fine. So I'm going to do our YouTube recap, see where we're at. Okay, pulling up the, I was going to pull up the, I always pull up the main YouTube 
app first to show you subscribers because the main YouTube app has the most current information on subscribers. 1,525 subscribers. We just went over 1,500 last week. And we'll go over to the YouTube Studio app to see our analytics, which are delayed by a day or two, depending. Our real-time views are way down. But that happens over a weekend. Uh, 370 real-time views. That's usually over 1,000. But, uh, yeah. We have 167,381 watch minutes the past 28 days. With 12,450 views the past 28 days. Average view duration, 13 and a half minutes, just like it has been for ever. Estimated revenue, the one everyone will see the past 28 days is $90.44. Holding steady at 25% super chats and 75% ad revenue. 118 new subscribers the past 28 days. 66.9% of views from subscribers, 96.1% likes versus dislikes, and the number one video the past 28 days is episode 80, 25 items that sold with 12,057 watch minutes. And the top three out of five are what sold videos. So, yeah. The process, I learned, obviously I'm learning the, the YouTube process for getting paid and it is direct deposit, um, but YouTube has to send you, there's two different things, and I, I should have brought this little form with me, but uh, YouTube mails you a PIN number in the mail to confirm your address on your AdSense account. And you have to put in that code, and that confirms your address. And then you, uh, there's a couple options, but uh, I did the, to confirm your bank account, they, you know, do a small deposit in your account and you enter that amount into their thing. And that confirms your account, just call it, just like PayPal do, does. So when well, that confirms everything. So when you do that, um, and you have over a hundred dollars to deposit in your account, that's when you'll get your money from AdSense and YouTube. So I didn't know that, you know? Never done it before, so <laughs> let me see here. What's going on here, guys? And lots of hides and deletes. Oh, thanks, Danny. Thank you for popping in. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm, like I said, I just got to jump in with both feet, you know. And this, I had two goose eggs. Yeah, and I, I had, I've had several myself this month. I've had more in this, this February than I had all of last year. Goose eggs, zero cells in a day. Mary McQueen did 115 on, I guess your Amazon marketplace. And that is, that is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Tommy, yeah. New attack stuff. And you know me, I have a lot of new attack stuff. You watch my haul videos. Yeah. Hello, milky, milky bark. Good. Thank you for popping in. Tracy thrifts it. Thank you for popping in. Oh, you'll get there, Candace. You, you have the, the, you're funny. <laughs> you, you, you'll get there. I never expected to be this far in it, honestly. So, yep. That's awesome. Packing and shipping sales. That's to me, it's really fun, you know, so. Oh, well, that's awesome. And it's a pre-owned cleats. Yeah. I have a few of those in my inventory. Uh, maybe I'm probably just asking too much for mine. They haven't moved, but uh, yeah. And Keith had nine on Saturday, but just bread and butter stuff. Hey, that's, you know, better than a goose egg, you know. <laughs> 
part-time pickers broke a hundred subs. That's awesome. <laughs> your goal for the year and you already, you already broke it. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah, but uh, spring football starts like next week in a lot of places. So cleats, that's, I'm not surprised cleats are selling really well. Yeah, it probably is different milky in the U.S. It's a hundred dollars, you know, hundred U.S. So, yeah. Good stuff, Anissa. Oh, all kid size as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I should do that, Tommy. You know, I did a, I did that with a almost everything during the Christmas season. And, uh, yeah, I, I may do that, go through and, and may, and, uh, convert the, uh, first class stuff to free shipping. It's just a kickstart stuff because it has been drastically bad this month. So absolutely. So I may, may just do that. And you know, this is follow February follows a trend too. Like in my retail stores, you know, I did it for 10 years and I would track month to month and then year to year. And in February, it was always one of our worst months in retail as well. Uh, so it's just following the pattern of online versus, you know, brick and mortar. That's awesome, Craig. Craig's at 840. You'll be at the thousand before you know it. I was at about where you are when uh, Scott, the bearded picker, had me on a show and really pushed my channel. And he got me that, you know, you know, that story pushed me over to the thousand mark. <laughs> Justin, Justin said, damn it, Tommy, no free shipping. Oh, thanks, Denise. Appreciate that. Denise is always good to me. Oh, hey, Glenn. Hey, Swamp Picker. Good morning. I hope everyone, I hope you're doing well. Hopefully, did you hit any garage sales in Louisiana? Has that season already started? I'm going to start going, you know, obviously I do the thrift stores, but I'm going to make a concerted effort to, um, go to some more estate sales in my area. Estate sales are usually really good in my area, whereas garage sales are just eh in our, in my area. And the bad thing about it is I love garage sales. I love garage selling. I love getting out there, you know, but uh, cause when you're talking about never can tell what you're going to find, you know, but, uh, Oh, thanks Denise. That is truly flattering, you know, and like, like I said, you guys are why I do it, you know. Pick and Flipper will have my new GoPro on Wednesday, new content for my channel. That's awesome. I have been, my trigger finger has been really itchy about getting a GoPro. I really, really want one, but I have a really, having a really difficult time with myself paying that 350 bucks for a GoPro. <laughs> uh, I really want one though. I really, really do. Cause I want it for not only my main channel, this channel, I want it for my second channel. I'm going to start in the spring as well. When I do some wa water stuff, you know, so good morning, Brian. Thank you for popping in. Uh, Craig says yard sales and state sales were sparse here. Not worth getting out now that time of the year, isn't it? Uh, Denise has always been super good to me. She's, I, I don't remember exactly when Denise subscribed, but tell, tell everyone when you subscribe Denise, because you know, it all blends together, but I know it was early. I know it was very early on and, and she's not in here, but my, uh, one of my two patrons is Sue Ann Reed, who is in Tennessee. And Sue Ann was like literally in the first 10 subscribers I ever had. <laughs> I remember that specifically. And she's been a patron for over a year now. So, uh, yeah, I really do appreciate it. 
good, good people. Oh, no doubt, Anissa. Yeah, the, yeah, the weather in this area has just been bad. Uh, Part-time pickers, I'm getting a new whip today, maybe tomorrow, 2003 mobility scooter. I broke my foot at work. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. Foot issues are bad stuff. I had a, when I was in Marine Corps boot camp, I had a very, very slight stress fracture, but luckily it didn't hold me back in my foot. Luckily it was very, very slight, you know, and, and we were actually getting close to, okay, I'm going to talk about Marine Corps boot camp a little bit. In Marine Corps boot camp, you have three phases. Well, at least this is the way it was when I was in, in the mid nineties. You have three phases. First phase is basically you're getting your feet wet, you know, learning about everything, learning how to do everything, just learning, you know, it's what it's all about. Second phase is, is field exercises and, and, and range work and, uh, a lot of, yeah, field exercises and stuff. And at the end of second phase, when we're doing a lot of what we call humping, which is hiking around with, you know, 60 pound pack on your back and your weapons and stuff, uh, very, very slight stress fracture in my foot. And luckily it was toward the end of second phase, because if it had been at the beginning of second phase, I probably would have been pulled back to another platoon. But since it was towards the end and all that, that heavy humping and hiking was done, I got to just heal and, uh, go on into third phase and the third phase is just your final everything brushing up over everything taking doing final drill uh final pft final practicals you know basically when you're becoming a marine and uh yeah and that was really it so you go in to a barracks in first phase and you, you move completely you move everything to another area of camp pendleton in second phase and then you move back to MCRD in San Diego in third phase. So you go MCRD, Camp Pendleton, MCRD. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been a long time ago, 25 years, but still kind of, kind of fresh. Although I've forgotten a lot of it. Denise said she started watching me when I had 50 subs. Yeah, I knew it was early. I knew it was very, very early on. Yep. I'm with you, Craig. Craig says, I can't afford a GoPro. Maybe I should just go look for a Go. <laughs> they do have some knock, uh, I call them knockoffs, but they're like a GoPro, but they're just Chinese knockoffs that for about 50 bucks. But obviously they may not have the durability of a GoPro, but uh, I don't know on that because I've never had one. So uh, Tracy is now packaging a vintage Pyrex percolator. That's awesome. Reseller Rockefeller thinks to sub to my channel before 400 subs. That's, that's awesome. That was quite a long time ago. That had to be back. What in like last fall, late summer or through the fall area. It's hard to remember. Brian, I am in Northern Virginia. I am in the Washington DC suburbs in Northern Virginia. Super windy today, 40 to 50 mile an hour gusting winds. <laughs> Keith, the command post picker, hard, harder, and hardest. Those are the three phases. Yep. <laughs> and Keith went through even before I did. He had it when it was really hard. He went, I think he said he went through boot camp in the 70s, and that's when. <laughs> when I went through in the 90s, they weren't, drill instructors weren't supposed to touch you. Well, they still did. You know, I got popped in the face a couple, you know, at least one time I got popped in the face. But, uh, Back then, they would just do it as a matter of course if you were doing something wrong. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I knew someone to say that, Anissa. I knew it'd be you. <laughs> but that's what it's called. You're humping. You know, have your ruck. 60 pounds of gear. Oh, and uh, gosh, I can't remember. It's third phase. It is third phase. Third phase, you do your swim qualification too where they try to drown your ass. Absolutely. Okay. Keith command post picker says Mount mother, but he left out the, the end part. It's Mount mother effer. <laughs> you remember it? Well, yep. Me too. What's funny is, you know, I went to, you know, I was infantry. I was 0311. So I went on the SOI and Mount mother effer. 
is nothing compared to the stuff at SOI in in the uh, the hills and mountains of Camp Pendleton. Oh man, Brian, that's awful. Yep, seventeen degrees and the wind chill. No. Yep. <laughs> it's tough in this. That's why my wife is tough as nails. She's a Marine as well. She went through Paris Island boot camp and she was active duty Marine. She is tough as nails. <laughs> there you go. Glenn his, his dad went through the Marine Corps boot camp in the fifties. They beat the crap out of you. Absolutely. And they still did it probably in the seventies when uh, Keith went through as well. There you go. Yeah, it's adjusting your attitude. You know. Yep. Absolutely. I got adjusted at least once, pretty hard. After that one time, though, the the smart ones. And I'm not saying I'm smart, but uh, I, I learned fairly quickly. When you once you're adjusted one time, you figure out really quick. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, Tracy said brutally windy. I guess it's all over, you know. So well, that's awesome, Anissa. Yep. Okay, so you guys got anything else today? Uh yeah, I, I had the you know, a few sales on eBay, of course, across a few counts. Uh, the one sell on Amazon that I got a package up. Yeah, uh, nothing on Poshmark, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I'm not looking forward to having to unpack the truck out in this wind, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. We got 51 watch watching, which is awesome. Hope everyone can hit that thumbs up if you're not watching on your TV or your smart device. Uh, I understand if you are, because I watch a lot of times on TVs and stuff. So I was weighing the pros and cons of all these apps. You know, uh, what was it, Scoutify versus like Scout IQ? But one of them, I think, is it Scout IQ, where if you get that, you get another little thing as well. I don't know. I still got to figure that out. Still got to figure it out. Yeah, we did the, uh, that's another thing we did in second phase is in second phase, you're exposed to gas to, I don't even know specifically what gas is, mustard gas for lack of a better term. So, you know, you have your, in second phase, when you're doing your field work, they have this little shack that they're, you know, have these, you know, the gas going, you know, it's kind of contained, but it's ventilated at the top. So it's slowly flowing out and you put on your gas mask and you, they file you in, you know, around this little metal building. And, uh, you know, if there's a group of, you know, drill instructors in there and, uh, you go in there and, you know, they've instructed you on how to do all this stuff on how to don and clear your mask and all that stuff. And they take you a group of you in there and uh, there's a group of drill instructors in there and they make you take off your gas mask, you know, and they, it's not like you take it off and put it right back on. No, you take it off and you're exposed to this gas and you're crying and crap's coming out your nose and you can't breathe. And, uh, and the drill instructors will go around to each and every person in there to make sure they're exposed and you have black streaks coming down your eyes and just all kinds of stuff. But uh, and then you have to don and clear your gas mask and the drill instructors will go around again and check and everything, make sure everyone is donned and cleared properly. And then you file out. So, uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> uh, fun stuff. Authorized picker got three items to ship out. That's awesome. It's always nice when, you know, if you only have three or four, that one of them is over a hundred bucks. That's really nice. Oh yeah, Craig. Craig, it says, ever get an offer and you have to think where the item is before accepting? Yeah, absolutely. Even now with everything, uh, it's really been better since I've inventoried everything and had everything categorized. But even still, I'm like, uh... <laughs>
Brian Fiddler, Fiddler has uh, Fiddler has two good local sales yesterday. Hundred dollars on an old printer and hundred ten dollars on a dehumidifier. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ooh, super hungry. Ate early yesterday and only had like a bowl of shredded wheat for dinner, essentially. And uh, yeah, I'm super hungry. Are they updating the Scout IQ thing app, Craig? Thank you, Denise. Yep, thumbs up if you can. Well, that's awesome, Craig. If you guys haven't watched Craig's video of his extension, you ought to go check it out. It's, it's a pretty cool little extension. Keith says it, they talking about the gas thing. It clears out your sinuses. It absolutely does. <laughs> it cleans out your sinuses for sure. And we may have, to, we may had to have seen the Marine Corps hymn as well. I just don't remember, you know, that one's kind of a blur. The, uh, <laughs> part-time pickers had to get pepper sprayed and gas as part of the work training. Yep. I've heard that, you know, like police officers have to do that. And some like prison guards have to do that and stuff. Basically, if you work in law enforcement, you have to be exposed to the things you're going to use on people. That's just good training. You know, that's awesome. Pick and flipper flipping that Funko pop. Uh, Marco uh, asked, what do you use to track sales profit on eBay? I'm currently using a spreadsheet. Yeah, I use a spreadsheet, but also use GoDaddy Bookkeeping. So uh, both both the spreadsheet and GoDaddy Bookkeeping in combination. Okay, guys. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. We're at uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, can't think of anything else, but I um, want to thank everyone. Thank Denise. Thank everyone for participating in chat. We do appreciate it. Um, got, like I said, I got a big, big haul video to film this afternoon. So uh, I am still hoping to list some stuff, but we'll see. Uh, but thanks, everyone. And uh, like I said, the uh, haul video will be up tonight for patrons and uh, tomorrow morning on YouTube. So, uh, thanks everyone. And we'll, uh, we'll see everyone Wednesday again for a live video. Thanks.